Puss in Boots. An old miller who was dying divided all his property between his three children. This was a very simple matter because he had nothing to leave behind except his mill, his donkey, and his cat. The oldest son received the mill. The second oldest son received the donkey, while the third and youngest son was left with the cat, who was called Puss. The younger son was initially very disappointed about only receiving the cat. My older brothers, by putting their property together, can make an honest living, but there is nothing left for me except this cat. I can't make a living out of a cat," said the younger son. The cat, after hearing the younger son talking to himself, sat up and began to speak. Master, I will be more useful to you than you think. How? Asked the younger son. All you have to do is give me a sack and a pair of boots, and you will soon find out that you are not so unlucky as you once thought," said the cat. Now, although the younger son did not fully believe the cat's words, he thought it was rather surprising that a cat should speak at all. So he decided to trust the cat a little bit, and got the cat a sack and a pair of boots, as requested. The cat put his boots on in a grand manner, and slinging the sack over his shoulder, he marched bravely to a nearby field which had lots of rabbits. Then, putting some letters into the sack and stretching himself out next to it as if he were dead, the cat waited until a fat rabbit peered into the sack to eat the food that was inside. Now, as soon as the rabbit put his head into the sack, the cat quickly drew the cords and trapped the rabbit inside. Being very proud of his successful hunt, the cat marched directly to the king's palace and begged to speak with the king. The king was also very curious about a talking cat wearing boots, so he agreed to see the cat. The cat said to the king, "Sire, here is a magnificent rabbit caught in a field which belongs to my lord, the Prince of Carabas, and he has asked me to offer it to your Majesty as a gift." Tell your master that I accept his present and that I am very much obliged to him," replied the king politely. The next day. The cat caught two splendid partridges in the same manner that he caught the rabbit. When he presented them to the king with a similar message as before, His Majesty the King was so pleased that he ordered the cat to be taken down to the kitchen and given something to eat. While enjoying his food, the cat did not cease to talk about the vast wealth of his master, the Prince of Carabas. Who was really just the miller's youngest son? One day, hearing that the king was intending to take a drive along the riverside with his daughter, the most beautiful princess in the world, the cat said to the youngest son, "Master, if you would only follow my advice, then your fortune is made." Okay, what would you like me to do? Said the younger son. The cat then said in a wise tone, "All you need to do is go and bathe in the river, at the specific place which I will show you, and leave all the rest with me. Just remember that you are no longer a miller's son, but my lord, the Prince of Carabas." And so the younger son did what the cat told him. While the younger son was bathing in the river, the king's coach passed by, and the king was surprised to hear loud cries from the cat. "Help! My lord, the prince of Carabas is drowning! Help!" Grateful for all of the presents that he had received from the cat, the king quickly ordered his guards to rescue the prince of Carabas, who was really just the miller's youngest son. 
While the king's guards were pulling the younger son out of the river, the cat came up and told the king that thieves have stolen the prince's clothes, so that it is now impossible for the prince to greet the king and the beautiful princess. Do not worry. We will soon fix that, answered the king in a kind voice. And the king immediately ordered someone to bring the most elegant supply of clothes for the younger son. Putting on these well-made clothes, the younger son looked as if he were a real prince. He then approached the king and offered his thanks. The king received the younger son courteously, and the princess admired the handsome young man very much. In fact, so charming did he appear to her that she asked her father to invite him into the coach with them. The cat, delighted at the success of his scheme, ran as fast as he could to stay ahead of the royal coach. The cat went on and on until he came to some peasants who were working in a nearby meadow. Greetings, good people," said the cat to the peasants. "The king is coming past here very shortly, and I would be most grateful if you can please say that this meadow belongs to my lord, the Prince of Carabas." The peasants, who were impressed by the cat's ability to speak and by his politeness, decided to help out the cat. So when the king drove by. And asked who the beautiful meadow belonged to, the peasants all answered that it belonged to their lord, the prince of Carabas. You have very fine land, my young prince," said the king to the prince of Carabas, who was really just the miller's youngest son. The king's coach drove on, and the cat always ran ahead of the coach and said the same thing to everyone he met, so that in the end. Even the king was astonished at how much land was owned by the prince of Carabas. At last, the cat arrived at a great castle. An ogre lived in the castle. This ogre was the actual owner of all of the land that the king's coach crossed. The ogre was a cruel tyrant and treated his peasants and servants very badly, which explained. Why they were so willing to help out the wise cat? They were hoping that this would turn their fortunes around. Putting on the boldest face he could, the cat marched up to the ogre's castle with his boots on and asked to see the owner. The cat explained to the guards outside that he did not wish to pass by the castle of such a noble gentleman without paying his respects. When the ogre heard this message. He was so flattered that he agreed to meet the cat. After all, it's not every day that someone describes an ogre as a noble gentleman. Thank you for seeing me, sir, and I hope that you will satisfy my curiosity," the cat said to the ogre. "You see, I have heard so many great things about your amazing abilities, and especially how you have the power to change yourself." Into any type of creature that you choose, a lion, for instance, or an elephant. That is quite true," replied the ogre. "And in case you doubt my powers, I will now immediately turn myself into a lion." Immediately, the ogre became a lion, and gave out a loud roar. <laughs> the cat acted very frightened. And the ogre was very pleased with his own powers. That was amazing, sir," said the cat. "But, sir, it may be easy enough for a large gentleman such as yourself to turn into a large animal, but I don't suppose you can turn into a small animal, say a rat or a mouse. To me, that would seem quite impossible." "Nothing is impossible," cried the ogre. You shall see. And immediately, the ogre turned himself into a little mouse running along on the floor. Little did he know that this was exactly what the cat wanted. Next, the cat did the very thing 
that all cats were born to do. He sprang upon the mouse and gobbled it up in a second, and that was the end of the ogre. Now by this time, the king's coach had arrived at the castle. The cat, hearing the noise made by the coach wheels, quickly ran to the front of the castle and said in a loud voice, "Welcome, your Majesty, to the castle of my lord, the Prince of Carabas." Truly, my dear prince, you have kept your secret well up to the last minute," said the king, who was very much surprised. "I have never seen anything finer than this castle. Indeed, I have nothing like this in my own kingdom." The prince, without speaking, offered his hand to the princess to assist her to get off the coach. Then everyone entered the great hall of the castle. And enjoyed a magnificent feast. Before the feast was over, the king, who was very impressed by the good qualities of the prince of Carabas, said to him, "My dear prince, how would you like to marry my daughter, the princess?" "Your Majesty, that would make me very happy," replied the prince of Carabas. And the princess said the same thing with her eyes. On the very next day, the princess married the prince of Carabas, who was really just the miller's younger son, and they lived happily ever after in the ogre's castle. As for the cat, he immediately became an important member of the royal family, and never needed to catch any more mice, except of course for his own enjoyment. <laughs>